Hello everyone, welcome back. In this presentation, let's see the last solved problem in relational algebra. Welcome to relational algebra solved problem 5. Let's see the question. The question is, consider the following relations P with the attributes X, Y and Z. Relation Q with the attributes X, Y and T and the relation R with the attributes y and v. And the values are given for the relations p, q and r. What we are required to solve? How many tuples will be returned by the following relational algebra query? And the query is, there is a Cartesian product in the left hand side. After doing the Cartesian product, there is a selection with this condition. And from that, we are going to project the column x. On the right hand side, the same kind of operation. The difference is, in the left hand side we have P cross R, whereas in the right hand side we have Q cross R. And after performing the Cartesian product, there is a selection with this condition. Once we do this, then we need to project only the column X. So obviously we will have left hand side and the right hand side results. And what we are finally going to do is just the set difference operation which is minus. After getting this result, we need to find out how many tuples will be returned by this query. That's what the question is. And this question was asked in Gate Computer Science in the year 2019. Let's highlight the key things here. Of course, we need to deal with the values. We need to do the Cartesian product. We need to apply selection. And finally, we need to apply the projection. Let me move this query to a new slide. Here is the query. At first what we will do, we will take the relations P and R. Let's apply the Cartesian product and get the result. After that, we will apply the selection logic for these two predicates. Remember, this is P dot Y is equal to R dot Y and R dot V is equal to V2. There is a value that is compared here. Two columns are compared here. Here there is a column having a value which is compared with the value V2. Once we get this result, then we will just project only the column X. Why waiting? Let's step into solving this part first. I mean P cross R, the Cartesian product. To do this, we need the relation P. I have just taken whatever is given in the question. Let me also take R. What we are going to do? The Cartesian product, which is this. We have already seen about this under the relational algebra fundamental operations. The relation P has 4 tuples 1, 2, 3 and 4. The relation R also has 4 tuples 1, 2, 3 and 4. As far as Cartesian product is concerned, the number of tuples that we will get as the output of the Cartesian product is 4 cross 4, which is 4 times 4. Let me solve that for you. It is P cross R. So the output relation is going to contain 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 columns because 3 columns here and 2 columns here. Also we can see Y is appearing on both the relation. If I simply name this as Y, we don't know which Y it is because it's a Cartesian product. Whether this Y is from the P relation or from the R relation. And that's why we have two separate columns to have the name unique. Here P dot Y is the Y that we get from this relation P r dot y is the y that we get from the relation r. Now how Cartesian product works? Just take the first row x1, y1, z1 that is joined with all four tuples in the other relation. So the first one is x1, y1, z1 which is this is combined with or joined with y1, v1, y1, v1. Take the second row. The same first row of P relation is combined with the second row of the relation R which is Y3, V2. Then the first row of relation P with the third row of relation R which is Y2, V3. And finally the first row of this relation P with the last row of the relation R which is Y2, V2. So the first row of relation P is combined with all four rows of the relation R. In this way, let's take the second row and we will join with all four rows in the second relation R. So we will be getting four more tuples. Are we done? No. We have another two rows. These two rows are pending. So these two rows will give another four plus four which is eight. 
So in total, we will be getting 16 tuples. What we have solved so far is P cross R. The output of P cross R is now available. What's the next step? We will start evaluating this portion, the condition, where P dot Y should be equal to R dot Y. I mean, this P dot Y should be equal to R dot Y. At the same time, R dot V should have the value V2. So when you compare this, then we will be getting only this row as shortlisted one. The reason is P dot Y and R dot Y should be equal. In this case, P dot Y and R dot Y are having the values Y2 and Y2 here. You can see here also we have Y2 and here also we have Y2. Why this row is not getting selected? Because there is another condition to be matching and the conditional operator we have here is and. It means both the conditions should be satisfied. This condition is satisfied. Also, R dot V should be V2. It means R dot V should also contain V2. Wherever we have V2, you see here, but here P dot Y is not equal to R dot Y. So this is not getting selected. The same case here also. V2, it's fine, but P dot Y is not equal to R dot Y. So the only row that matches here for these two conditions is this. We have evaluated the selection. What is the output of this selection? We will get all five columns but with only one row. Now from this, what we are going to retrieve? We are going to retrieve or project only the column X because the projection operation gives only the specified column. So we are going to evaluate this. So the only column that is going to be selected is the column X. So the output for the left hand side which is containing a tuple X2 we are done with the left hand side. Let's now move on to the right hand side, which is this side. To compute the right hand side portion, let's take Q and R. Before computing the complete portion, let's focus on this Cartesian product and then selection. After doing that, let's go for the projection. To do this, we need relations Q and R. Let me bring Q and R here. What operation we are going to do? It's a Cartesian product. So apply the same logic what we have followed earlier. Here also we will be getting 5 columns with 16 tuples. The same, first row of this relation is joined with all other 4 rows of the other relation. Likewise, the second row, third row and the fourth row. So we will be getting a total of 16 tuples. We are done with the Cartesian product. Let's now apply the selection logic matching or satisfying these two conditions. Remember here also and. The condition here is Q dot Y is equal to R dot Y. At the same time, Q dot T should be greater than 2. So, the tuples that are matching these two conditions are these three tuples. Can you see here? Q dot Y should be R dot Y. Q dot Y should be R dot Y here, here, here. Of course, we have other places also like this. But the other condition should also match. Q dot T should be greater than 2. In this case, it's not greater than 2. But here, it's greater than 2. Here also greater than 2. And that is why we get 3 tuples as the output for this selection operation. Finally, we will go for the projection, which is this. What column we are going to project? The column X. The column X is here. So, are we going to get 3 tuples? No. The projection will remove the duplicate entries. Because it outputs only the distinct values. Here we have 3x1, however, the output will be having only one tuple. We have now evaluated the right hand side as well, which is x1. Let me bring both the outputs into a new page. Here is the left hand side output what we have computed. Here is the right hand side output what we have computed. The only operation that is left now is the set difference. Let's apply the set difference operation. And what will be the number of rows that we will get? Because that's what the question is. How many tuples we will get for this query? As per the set difference logic, we will get only one tuple or one row in the output. It means the tuples in the left hand side, set difference, the tuples in the right hand side. The tuples in the left hand side has x2 minus the tuples in the right hand side, which is x1. So at the end, we have x2 as the result meaning only one tuple in the output. So, I can conclude the answer for this question is only one tuple or row. 
I hope the session is informative and thank you for watching.